Oh, wait, 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 wait. How do you pronounce your last name? Moriello. Moriello, okay. Now, is this... Welcome to Focus on Albany. I'm Cynthia Pooler, and my guest today is Frank Moriello, who is a county legislator, and he's going to talk about what's going on in the county ledge that everybody should know. So, Frank, uh, how's things going? Well, they're they're going well. It's it's been actually a quiet time in the legislature. There's really hasn't been much happening, and and since COVID. It, it really has been a, a bit quiet. Uh, there's really not much, but there, there are a few items here that I think are of interest that I, I think the, you know, our, our constituents and the residents of Albany County will be interested in. Okay, what are they? Okay, well, I'll start with the first one. Okay. Um, we are looking to establish a tree preservation policy in Albany County. And, and I'll explain this a, a little bit. Um, there is a solar farm that is being proposed for county land just west of the airport. And um, so myself, uh, county legislators, um, Jeff Purley and Peter Tunney went and did a site visit and we were looking, looking at the land. We were told that much of it's vacant. Um, you know, there aren't very many trees, a lot of fields there. But when we got there, we, we noticed that there were quite a few trees there and, and they're old growth trees. And, and these trees would have to come down um, in order to accommodate the uh, solar panels. Mm -hmm. So um, County Legislator Jeff Purley was thinking about this and he did a little research and other counties have a forest preserve or a forest preserve policy and, and Albany County does not have one. So what he did is he, he um, decided to um, sponsor a resolution and he reached across the aisle as well because we wanted this to be bipartisan and we wanted everyone to be on board with this. So County Legislator Bill Reinhardt, who uh, represents parts of uh, Bethlehem and New Scotland, mm -hmm. uh, co-sponsored this with, with Jeff. And Jeff represents Altamont and um, much of the hill towns. So what essentially it does is, uh, and I'll, I'll read some of this because it's just a little bit easier to read to, to understand it a little, a little bit better. Um, where there is a proposal to cut and or remove more than one half an acre of non-invasive trees of four inches or greater in diameter. And we saw this when we, when we toured the site. Many of these trees were larger than four inches in diameter and there are old growth trees. Um, and any Albany County owned parcel as part of a single project, cutting and or removal of such trees is prohibited until the following conditions have been met. Number one, the county shall prepare or cause to be prepared an inventory of trees to be cut and removed, which indicates the species and diameter of all non-invasive trees. Non-invasive trees are designated by New York State Department of Environmental Conservation. Um, of any trees four inches or greater in diameter and the county executive shall cause the planting or of a non-invasive tree sapling as a replacement on a parcel owned by Albany County or alternatively shall place an amount equal to two times the tree's replacement value into an account created and designated for the purpose of furthering uh, permanent carbon sequestration within the county. So therefore, you know, we just don't want to clear cut lots and um, if we're going to develop some of our land, we want to protect um, the environment. We want to uh, protect our forests and, and we want to replant these trees in, in other areas where it makes sense. So how, how do you feel about the, uh, the solar farm? Are you for or against that? Well, um, we're going in that direction, I guess. Um, I, I, I think I'd like to see solar farms maybe out in more rural areas and, and not so much uh, in, in suburban areas as we have them here. And you'll be able to see the solar panels, I think, from Waterfleet Shaper Road. Um, you know, we, we have to transition to renewable energy. You know, there, there's no doubt about it. And, um, you know, I, those solar panels will have a lifespan of about 20 to 25 years and then they'll, they'll need to be replaced. Mm-hmm. 
So, and there's, and you don't recycle the solar panels either. So it'll have to be landfill. So, so you know, that's a, it's, it's a tough decision, but at least we're going to do something to protect um, the environment and, and can replant trees. So the, uh, the, the uh, solar farm is quite big, right? Yes. Yes. I don't even recall how large it is, but it's, it's fairly large. Okay. So what else is going on in negotiations? Well, let's see. Uh, there's another, well, we actually have a, a resolution for creating lactation rooms in county buildings. And uh, what this is, is that there's a New York state law that says you have to provide for, uh, for new moms uh, an area, a lactation room area. So um, what we've done is we've taken $75,000 from um, a line that is currently not being used and we're moving it into this line to do this. Uh, the only thing that I asked, I, I asked um, if there was a, um, a plan a uh, financial impact statement so we know how we're spending the money. And um, so I'm just waiting to, to hear that. I believe we'll get that at our county legislature meeting, but it's a great idea. It's something that I think is important. Um, I think new moms need to have a place where they can go in, in privacy and, um, and a restroom is not the place to go. So, so it's, a, it's a great idea, I'm very much supporting it. I just was wondering how they, they planned on rolling this out and, and which buildings they were going to uh, place these rooms in. Now, will it be, will it just be government offices or will it be? Yes. Oh, yeah. okay. This is just in county, op county office buildings, yes. Okay, so it wouldn't happen down at the uh, New York State Legislature or a McDonald's on, on Wolf Road? Then. Well, the, the New, York State, New York State has this policy, I believe, for their buildings. But mm -hmm. I, you know, we don't, as far as I know, there isn't one for any private industry. And uh, that, that's really a good question to ask. And that's something I, maybe I'll ask that question as to what the private sector has to do to accommodate new moms. Okay, that's good. So what else is going on? Well, um, I think you saw we passed legislation about Central Warehouse. Uh-huh. And uh, so we have transferred ownership of Central uh, Warehouse to two of our uh, larger developers in, in the area, Columbia and uh, Redburn. Mm -hmm. And um, there's a little controversy with the transfer of this property. The, uh, the, the I should say now, former owner, uh, his last name is Blum, he, he felt that he wasn't treated properly and was not given um, enough time and, and wasn't, didn't receive any cooperation and, and his efforts to remodel and renovate the old central warehouse building. But um, he's owned it for five years. Mm -hmm. um, he has gone to court before and, uh, and lost. Um, he's suing again. And uh, we'll, we'll see what happens uh, this time. It doesn't appear that he's gonna be successful. But anyway, what, what would happen is currently the, there's $550,000 in, in back taxes that are owed. Mm. And um, so what the county is going to do is forgive those back taxes, but charge Columbia and Redburn $50,000 for the property. So in a sense, we're forgiving a half a million dollars in back taxes. Wow. These are, these are two big developers that, that have really proven themselves in, in the area. They've, they've done a number of projects are very successful and they're large. And if we really don't act on this now, I think that that building would just remain vacant and empty and in an eyesore for a number of years to come. Um, I don't know if we really had a choice uh, on this. I think we had to support it if, if we want to see that eyesore eliminated from the, uh, the Albany uh, skyline. So what are they going to do with it if it's developed? Well, they're looking at possible retail um, on, the, on the bottom floor um, and uh, Huckfin's warehouse, or I'm sorry, Huckfin's uh, warehouse as well as Play, Playland is going to be relocated there from what I'm told. Um, there's, uh, there are stories or floors that are near the bottom. I, I'm gonna say probably the third to maybe the sixth floor that have mm -hmm. windows. 
So they're looking to place uh, possibly uh, apartments or condos or living space in, in, on those floors where there are windows. Mm -hmm. And the floors above are really not sure yet, not quite sure what their, what their plans are, but um, we need to do something. We need, we need to um, do something with that building and really rid the city of that eyesore. So um, now when did they build that building? Do you uh, know? It's almost a hundred years old. I believe oh, it was wow. built in maybe later in 1922 or 1923. Okay. So it and is a hundred years old. And at that point, was it a thriving building? Was there a lot of commerce coming uh, well, out? Well, yes, it was cold storage is what it was. Okay. Cold building and, and a freezer. It was also a freezer. Okay. And that's why the, the walls are so thick. It's just cost prohibitive to uh, to take it down. Uh, okay. just, and, and that's why it's being renovated. It just costs too much money to uh, to take the building itself down. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So so. Um, so that's that's what's going on with Central Warehouse, which is good. I hope by the end of the year, the beginning of next year, we're going to start seeing some improvements there. I think that'll be. Uh, That'll be nice. Uh, nice. Is, so, is it a given that the amusement park will will be moved over there? Yes. Now, now that uh, the developers own it and they're renovating it, it looks like both Huck Finn's uh, warehouse as well as the little playland will be moved there as well. Okay. That's that's what that's the impression I get. That's the information that I'm getting. Now, do you think if it's moved there that it will be more accessible to the public? I think, well, I, just as accessible as it is now. I don't know if there's really it would be a change, but I mean, it's, it, they're very, very easy to get to both, both locations. Yes, but you know, you have to drive, drive there. Is there bus service? I don't know. That I don't know. Okay. Good question. That's the warehouse district of Albany, and I'm not really sure if they have any bus service there. Okay. And the amusement parks only open in the summertime. Yes, that's correct. Mm-hmm. Correct. That was the old Hoffman's Playland up in Newtonville. And, yep. And I can remember my parents taking me there when I was a child. Mm hmm And I took my kids there when they were when they were young. Yeah. It's a nice place. I, I've been there as an adult. It is. It is. And it brings back a lot of memories. I mean, everybody, I grew up in Colony. Um, I still live here, and and all of us from Colony remember going there um, all the time. It was it was a, a great little place to go. Have so you no, gone? That's nice. Have you gone back there since they moved it? Yes, once. I was curious, okay. so I went back to look and walked around, and it they did a nice job, mm -hmm. uh, and and, uh, and I hope he's successful. Um, when he, a couple when he, of a couple of things that were in. Uh, going towards Slatham on Route 9 are not in, in the new location. Oh, uh, well, where they, where they were before, where Hopkins was before? They they didn't move everything, I'm sure. Well, they I think they did. I think they did. They just compact everything. I think things were more spread out um, okay. up, up there in, in Latham. So I think, I think everything is there, just more compact. Okay. Yeah, okay. and that area has developed quite a bit. There's, there's more to come, and uh, that the area along Route Nine hasn't been developed yet. I'm not sure what's going there, but I know there are either high-end apartments or condos uh, that are behind there that have been built, and uh, and there's some eateries right along Route Nine. So that that area is coming along too. Now, what do you think of all of the uh, uh, high-end apartments that are? have been built in Albany and around Albany. Is there a, a, a need for that? I mean, it, they're pretty expensive, right? They are, they are. But if the market is there, I mean, the developers will look at the demographics and they'll do market studies. And if the market can bear that type of uh, um, building and, and apartment, then they will go ahead and they'll build them. How do you feel about that? Well, I, I'm I'm more of a free market person myself, so therefore, if if uh, a person wants to build that type of uh, apartment or or living area and and um, they can fill it, you know, God bless them and good for them. 
you know, when there's so many vacant vacant places in Albany, um, I just I just wonder if there's really a need for expensive apartment buildings on the outskirts of Albany. Well, look at some of the development that's taken place in the city of Cohoes um, on Green Island. So there are apartments in Cohoes right along the Mohawk River and Green Island as well. There are apartments and even with Central Warehouse now going to have some apartments there. So therefore, some of these older areas are being um, renovated and, and they're coming back to life. The Harmony Mills is another example in Cohoes of an old mill, an old factory that has been transformed now into apartments. There are either apartments or condos, I think they're apartments. But I mean, that's great to see we're, we're rejuvenating these areas and they're, and they're coming back to life. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. So what else in the county ledge? Well, the other thing that I wanted to bring up was um, redistricting. And, yes. and I think this is very important because um, after every census, the, the county has to redraw or change the county legislature district lines. And uh, there's a committee that's been formed to do just that. And they're hard at work at that process right now. Um, there's, a, there's a main commission, and then there's a subcommission, which is looking at the minority majority uh, districts in the, in the city of Albany. Mm -hmm. The last three times that the county has gone through this redistricting process. Uh, the county was sued by, by the minorities saying that they're, they were disenfranchised, that they, um, the lines weren't drawn properly to include their, their districts. And, um, and the county lost each one of those uh, mm -hmm. lawsuits. So this time it was decided we do it right uh, or try to do it the best we could, I should say. So the, the minority majority districts have their own little little commission. They hire their own mapper and they will go and they will draw the lines as they feel is, is best for their constituents um, in their area, which is, which is Albany, in the city of Albany. And once that is completed, they give their recommendation to the main commission. The main commission can adapt it as it's, at, as they're, uh, as it's given to them. They can modify it or, or they can just disregard it altogether. Um, if you go onto the county's website and you look for the redistricting information, you'll see there's already a proposed map. It's the initial um, draft of the minority majority districts. So you could look at that. Right now they're proposing, I think I counted seven districts in the city of Albany. So um, that, that I'm sure will be modified and, and they'll be working on that. The, then the, the main commission itself is looking to draw the lines for the, for the rest of the county. And uh, they've already had one public hearing that was back in March. And there's another public hearing coming up this month. It's April 14th, which I think is important for everyone to, uh, to attend and, and, and listen to. They're going to go through, I think, many of the current districts. There's 39 Albany County legislative districts. Mm -hmm. And each district uh, should have, eight, if, in a perfect world, I should say, each district should have 8,105 people. So they try to draw the lines to get as close as you can to that. It can deviate no more than 5% above or below. Mm -hmm. And, and um, there are other, there's other criteria there such as they stay within municipal boundaries is, is one. Um, i trying to remember some of the other ones. They try to stay contiguous. They try to stay, um, um, what was the other, some of the other ones that they, 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 they try to, to keep it so that um, no one is disenfranchised and, and nobody, there's no political influence on how these lines are drawn. Um, in the old days, they would look at where county legislators would live, and as they were drawing the lines, if they saw that there may be two county legislators in one district, well, they would redraw the line to make sure that that wasn't the case any longer. They're not doing it this time. They're not taking into account where any of us live, and they're going to draw the lines 
based on, on how they should be drawn. Um, and um, I was looking at the, on, on the website, it also shows the current 39 districts and it shows the population of those 39 districts. And as an example, in my legislative district, I'm in the far Southwest corner of the town of Colony. I think I saw, I have 7,700 residents mm -hmm. um, in my district. So that means my district line will expand because I'm gonna to have to expand in order to um, have, increase my, my uh, district to 8,100 people. Um, there were some districts, a lot of the growth I saw was up in the north end of Colony, up in the Bout Corners area. And um, so those districts will shrink because there, there are some districts up there that have um, more than 8,000 people um, in, uh, in their districts. It's interesting too, if you try to stay within municipal borders, um, as an example, the city of Cohoes has a population of uh, a little over 16,000 people. So if you want 8,100 people in your legislative district, then the city of Cohoes should have two county legislators and then a little bit somewhere will bleed out into another area. Um, and so the house, the house only has 16,000 residents. That's it, 16,000 residents. Really? Yeah. And, and that that's uh, that's a city, right? Yes, it is. Yes, it is. I believe the um, the city of Waterville has less than 8,000, I think. Wow. Yeah, I think so. So uh, that's interesting. And so you'll you'll try to keep these within our municipal boundaries um, mm -hmm. as, as as best you can. So that'll be now, interesting. Now the question is, do, does there have to be a a racial or ethnic or or any well, that's, kind of makeup? Yes, that's that's where the um, the minor minority majority districts come in in the city of Albany. So they draw they drew their district lines. And then they give their recommendation to the um, to the main commission, and so they they have the opportunity to draw their lines, which the, which they didn't have in the past, and you know which resulted in lawsuits and cost the county um, a lot of money mm -hmm. to defend itself and lost. So, do you think this will be done before the next uh, county um, election? Oh yes, it has to be. It has to be. In fact, they're they have a timetable. They're looking to present the final product to the legislature by June thirtieth. Wow. So uh, so we should have the uh, the initial draft by June thirtieth, and at that point we can adapt it. We cannot adopt it, um, and it'll be interesting to see what they what they come up with because the. The election calendar has changed. And in the past, we would have our primaries in September. Mm -hmm. So we would go out and get our, our nominating petition signed the very end of May, all through June into the beginning of July. Mm -hmm. Well, now the primary is in June. So we have to go out in March and mm -hmm. get our primary, our, our uh, petition signed. So therefore, um, the, everything happens earlier. So we have to determine and decide whether or not um, we can find candidates to run in all these districts based on, on, on the new district lines. And a lot of legislators are waiting to see where the districts are as well. So has, the, has there always been um, Republicans represented on the county legislature, unlike Albany, which is all Democratic? Uh, yes, yes, there, there have been, um, believe it or not, though, every county legislature district has more registered Democrats than Republicans, but there are nine of us Republicans out of 39, I should say eight and one conservative who uh, caucuses with the Republicans. So there's, there's nine of us. And, uh, as an example for myself, I, I represent the district I grew up in. I mean, I've, I've lived here almost all my life. Mm -hmm. So um, I raised my kids here. And um, in fact, uh, when you see my campaign signs, um, I use my high school colors, uh, Colony Central High School colors, garnet and gold, while everybody else is using a, 
a variation of red, white, and blue, <laughs> monarch gar garden wow. gold, and, wow. they, and they stand out. And I've, I've had people say to me, oh, I see what you're doing. And mm -hmm. sure, I'm born and raised here and, and, and proud of it. So we just have a couple of minutes left in, the, in, okay. in, in that time frame. Why don't you give out your contact information and tell us exactly where your district is and how people can get a hold of you. Okay, um, what you can do, my, my district again is located in the town of Colony. Um, I am the minority leader of the legislature. I'm located in the Southwest corner, which doesn't mean much to people, but if you know Central Avenue, it, my district is from um, New Connor Road, Route 155 West to the Schenectady County line. To the south of my district is the Gilderland Town Line. To the north of my district is Waterville, Shaker, and, and Console, and Lysak Hill Roads up over to Niskayuna. So that that's the area I'm in. Um, to uh, to get a hold of me, um, the best thing to do it really is to to send me an email, and my email is really easy to to remember. It's just my initials F A M, and then Colony at gmail.com. So famcolony at gmail.com. Feel free to send me emails and uh, and I'd like to I'd like to hear from from our constituents. In fact, I've sent out newsletters um, in my legislative district and I plan to do so again this year. I'm just waiting for the lines to be drawn so that I know where my legislative district actually is. Thank you, Frank. And uh, I'm sure that we will talk again. You, I'm Cynthia Pooler. This is Focus on Albany. You, you've been listening to Frank Mariello, and thank you so much, and thank you, everybody, for listening. Have a wonderful day.